taking this TV, trying to get it to move across. Doing it cheap like always. Got side railings on beds that I drilled into. Got the rivet. That is a track. Got these tires. What if you did them side by side? Then they're snug right in that bar. They roll. Put ready rod through there. And I'm going to nut it on each side. And that that ready rod is stiff. And then I'm going to put a giant washer on each side. Closed eye bolt. Those will go on the side. Washer. Couple nuts. That'll allow it to rotate. Tires are going to want to move. Run along the groove and the weight of the TV. Keep it down. Spotted strut. I bought a wall mount. The liquidation world a long time ago. Five bucks. I'm using this to mount two struts along horizontally. And then you'll have a strut that goes just underneath there. Maybe eight inches. On this side, I'm going to double nut it. Lock lock. I'm going to do the same on the bottom strut on the TV. And then in between will be loose so that I can rotate the TV around. Let's get started. All done and mounted. Use this uh, middle brace to hold things. I tied rope around there on both sides. Turned out. This thing was pretty freaking heavy. Uh, the bed frame's like metal, so from, but once you start adding things, the bed frame, which is uh, 68 across, I separated it with my two lawnmower tires, put blocks the same length on each end. They're more for support. I started with the uh, mount. I started with the ready rods. I screwed those in side by side, and they were just enough. The ready rods were going right against the sides of these. Got my washers, nuts. That's how you adjust your sides, obviously, is with your nuts and your washers. I got that on both sides. 3 8 ready rod, about two inches on each side. Wheels, the eye bolts. I'm just gonna move this over. The way I got the swivel was by the second piece of strut. This one keeps the tires in. I clamp those together, and then I've got three big washers, probably fender washers, like one washer bed. It's been good for you know, four or five months now. Because, you know, I want to make sure that shit's not going to break on you. 18-inch piece of ready rod. This old TV mount. So I got my shallow strut attached to that. And then I got my plug here and some uh, tie wraps that take my HDMI splitter over there. If I got it there and I've got enough length, I'll have enough length over here when it's not bended. But then you can go all the way. Whatever you want. I'll show you how to wire a plug. It's a light while we're at. This is just a board I made for my first year. A mock power supply. So you got your neutral bar and you got too hot. Your 240. You got your ground bar. Attach to a plug end. I run 15 amps through and apprentices use this. I'll draw what I want them to run with this board and learn a thing or two without the pressure. The red would tie into my light. So this light won't actually be functional because I'm using the black. The neutral shared for both the red and the black. But those would go together. Red would go together blacks would go together type thing this is one 120 volt circuit the red's another 120 volt circuit you got a metal box metal boxes have to be bond so if one of these hots touches this it's got a return path back to ground you don't have copper or you don't actually have ground from your neutral bar it doesn't affect things it's just uh time to get with the times what are you getting more you're going to have brass and silver terminals. Silver terminals will always go to your neutrals, and brass will always go to your hot. You're going to be twisting right, because that's how your wire morets or your are going to twist. Got little holes in there for making loops. So with the terminal on like that, it pulls with the loop. Cap my... First, these blacks are just going to travel through down this two wire, down to that plug. It's going to be my power. I'm going to be dropping neutral off to the red here, and then with that other terminal, it's going to carry it down through to my plug. Since we're sharing those neutrals. Removing a device, you take your hot off first, then your neutral, then your ground, because you're always covered in case something bad happens. And putting them back, the reverse, so you start with your ground and then go to neutral and then go to hot, so that you're always maintaining safety. But since I'm not even energized, keyless style. So and so these octagons come with screws, and they're keyless because you don't have to take the screws all the way out because they pop in and then you screw them around. So now we're going to do this. I'm 
using the three bar because it was extra. <laughs> Now these plugs have uh, two terminals, so you can put one of each, and I could do that and I could just carry on, but I'm going to make pigtails for these, and the reason for that is if I have these combined and these combined and I just have a single one coming off, if I got a pigtail for the rest of the circuit, yeah, it's going to be fine. So this plug will still work, if the device itself isn't working, then this just won't work, you know, if I've just got it going in. The device that isn't working or causing a problem will just cause the entire circuit to go off. But then you've got to cut your circuit in half, and you got to locate which side of that is on, and then you just keep going half and half until you figure out which plug. So since we're uh, only going with one terminal, we'll just set those other ones in. No harm, no foul. Start with the ground. Give it a little notch up and it'll catch in on this, tightening up. Ba boom, boom. Put that on. Your loops are gonna be going down. Lift your black upside down. Boom, boom, boom. Now for a little extra safety. That's just some basics on wiring a plug. That's pretty much the end of it. 